Hi everyone, this is Bobby from Beyond-Games.com and we're here doing another classic capture. Um, I thought I'd do a little um, little history lesson here for you. Um, today we're going to be doing Remote Control Dandy SF, which stands for Science Fiction. And uh, this is a, a group of games here by uh, the same developer, uh, running a similar engine. The first one here is Remote Control Dandy, uh, the first game. This only came out in Japan. Um, and we've done this for the class of capture already. Uh, the second one we're doing now is Remote Control Dandy SF, which is the sequel to this one. And then there's Tetsujin 28 Go, which we've also done. This is not a sequel to these two. This is actually an anime or a game um, based off an anime or a manga in Japan. We've also done this one on the Classic Capture series. Go ahead and check that out as well. They all run a similar engine and control type, although this is the most radically different game of the bunch. And then this is the only game that actually came out in America. This is Rad. Remote, uh, Robot Alchemic Drive. Um, we haven't done a video for this just yet. This is actually be coming out soon on the Classic Capture series. If, probably by the time we're watching this, we've already done it. But for this video, we're going to play Remote Control Dandy SF. Science fiction. So I was, as I was saying, the the games that uh, I had just showed you were all developed by the same developer, which I forgot to mention was Sandlot. Uh, Sandlot uh, developed the engine that uh, all of these games are performing on, and they all have control control <coughs> schemes that are very similar. <laughs> control. Control. Yeah, duh. Uh, and Dandy control. They're actually well known for <laughs> developing games with odd control schemes other than the robots. Um, they actually have a Wii game out right now that's uh, pretty unique as well. Uh, only in Japan, unfortunately. I like how this one is science fiction. The other ones weren't. No, no, it was reality. It was a the biography. Was, it was well, biography it, of it, Japan. It, it, it's like Back to the Future promised us hovering cars. This promised Japanese kids giant robots. And, uh, I won't and we've all been let down. Although they are still closer to it than us. They have the the one one scale Gundam. That's true. So I have not been able to determine what the story is completely. Um, I do know that uh, you embody a child as you did in the first game, which we've covered in the Classic Capture series. You are a child that controls a robot. I, I don't. I don't know what the what it is with Japan giving children giant mecha. I mean, not it, only it, this it, series. It, 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 okay. There's all the characters. Just just know halfway through this game, Hugh Jackman's gonna come out and control a robot. Crickets? It, you were there. Well, all I know <laughs> is it takes it takes a lot of uh, ideas from the first remote control Danny on the place. Oh! <laughs> okay, keep going. Man, you got me lost now. Um, and uh, there's a lot of a uh, lot of things you see in uh, other mecha anime and everything else. I mean, yeah, they just ripped off Eva. <laughs> In, to some extent, yes, that is true. Uh, unlike most mecha games, you actually control your robot from a distance. Uh, that's where the remote control thing comes in, oh, oh. and use a remote control. And uh, well, that's that's one of the things I like about this game is that it honestly feels, due to the control scheme, that you are using a remote controlled robot. Yeah, and that's and and Brad, which at this point we haven't covered, although by the time you listen to this, we probably have. Um, the control scheme is very similar as well, where you still control it remotely. The only one in the series that you control, no, 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 no. Uh, the only one, no, they're all remote control. Yeah, you, even Tetsujin was uh, with the remote. Yeah, it was still you know uh, the walking buttons. Yeah, on his. yeah. I, I mean, this game. I mean, if they made a modern version oh, now, God, I wish they would. Or it, or an HD. This game, uh, this game would, would, would benefit yeah, from an de HD. Definitely. The frame rate, unfortunately, it, this thing is pushing the PS2 to its limits in some ways. Um, the frame rate at times is perfect. It's like does drop flowing. sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it's, like right here it's fine. You know, it, it, especially when the robots are up close. But if it has to do anything like in a draw distance, um, anything with smoke, then it just oh just bogs yeah. down. Yeah. Anyway, as I was saying though, I mean, if there was to be a new version or a remake. It would seriously benefit from uh, the dual analog sticks, and that would also give a more modern remote control feeling. Well, it uses dual remote control sticks in this one. No, but I mean, as far as like the walking oh. goes, you know, well, to control it that. That's way. why I said in the beginning of the video that Tetsujin, to some extent, is the most playable because Tetsujin. Um, yeah, I, I you, you yeah, use the analog control wise. I think Tetsujin is is the best. As far as visual, I don't 
really think so. Yeah, no, definitely. Just because, especially with the little laser to the robot. I mean, I know it gives. I know it, it's a throwback to the the, the animation, the style from yep. when that originally was made. Yep. But it really is annoying and takes away from the game. I think. I like that you can paint your robot. By the way, I only kind of semi painted it. I kind of got lazy. Like I got some color in, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna paint him and gonna make it uh my own and then at one point i was like well he's got enough color on him and it's like ah screw armored core 5 seriously oh man you're really dating the video here got yeah, it that. somehow the beauty of editing <laughs> <laughs> um so like the like uh, remote control dandy before it um you control actually i chose the 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 mech that looks sim- most similar to the, the warden one. yeah and rad they're known as the mega knights yeah, I just remember that the name in Remote Control Dandy 1 was called Vordan. Yeah. Uh, I forget I, what the other ones were called. I don't know, and I don't think there's any direct tie to the first game. It doesn't seem I, like it. I don't think so, um, especially from what I've seen so far, because, I mean, I've played a lot of Remote Control Dandy, and from what I can see, I mean, none of the characters really look similar. Mm. Um, even if they were grown up, I mean, they still don't really look like it would be anything close if you're wondering why we're doing a lot of guesswork here it's because we don't speak japanese yeah and my friend just went back to tokyo so uh, I, in fact when i was playing the game i spent a lot of time making up the dialogue just going like he's saying stuff about that lady being a bitch you, you and then that white guy is like ah uh i'm the nerdy one you, oh. should, you should see bobby watch spanish television oh <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it, it is quite an event. Um, ah, just uh, have a unit 16. <laughs> well, at least this one won't go berserk. Uh, the you, kid's you, not emo. You don't know that. <laughs> and you know, and you Mimi, Mimi here actually looks like a me, which is surprising, actually. If you look at her, she looks like a me. Um, yeah, a lot of text. There's me, or you, or whoever's controlling it. Tiny, tiny little baby boy. Why do you have cat ears? Uh, Why because, not? Because this is Japan. In Japan? Why not? <laughs> Why are there little running dudes in the bo- bottom right hand corner that don't appear anywhere else in the game? Uh, one of hey, my it's Goldeneye. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite things actually about this compared to any of the other games is the HUD. Um, it's a lot closer to what you would expect a modern HUD to kind of look like. Uh, you have the health and that of, of your robot on the left, the health and other stats of the robot of the enemy on the right, your HP and booster, booster being the, the rockets that allow you to uh, go. Uh, just like the other games, you actually have to maneuver yourself, uh, well, your body, as, as well as the robot, into position to be able to see what you're doing. Except for in this one, you're actually able to jump well, we'll rocket pack on the and buildings. Move. Yeah, while, it, while it's moving. And you know the other thing, and I know, um, Tim, you, you, you didn't get to experience this, experience this enough. You can actually make him not only lock onto your robot, you can actually uh, lock your camera onto the enemy robot so it makes it a little bit easier to focus on. Like, it changes the camera angle. Well, here, here's a question. Cause mm-hmm. I, I, are you controlling both the robot and your camera angle, or is it locked onto the robot? Uh, the camera is locked onto the robot if you're locked onto him. Okay, I really like that because in the first game, wherever, however you were standing, that was your field of vision. Yeah, you'd it, have to literally take off your, you know, cancel out the robot, switch, you know, your view, and then s- go back in. No, I, 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 no, no. You still have to do a little bit of that, but it tries to follow it. But you gotta. You got to keep in mind that as big as uh, you know these these machines tend to be, uh, it's almost impossible. Uh, especially when like right here, I'm getting stuck in behind a building that I'm trying to get on top of. I lost my boost there. Um, it makes it really hard to keep um, to keep a, a good view. But right here, I got a pretty good view, uh, and they look they look really close because they are actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and <laughs> if you're wondering why I'm staring at the sky, I'm still trying to learn the controls. This one differs from the other ones where it uses a lot of inertia. Uh, uh, but Bobby, stop lying. You're just fist pumping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the robots. <laughs> um, actually, you move the deep, you move the body in one way and then you do the opposite. So down, like down punch for that, that really cool hammer strike thing. Um, also, you when you walk into the enemy, you can do like a super charge punch, but it takes it takes a lot of practice. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I also think also think the single player, which we'll show some multiplayer, me and Tim uh, playing it. But I think the single player, the robots generally move faster. Everything feels faster here. Um, 
it's also me now. Well, I don't know. I haven't played the story mode myself, but from what I played in the multiplayer, it seemed like the robots themselves have some serious speed differences. I remember the first one I used was extremely slow, yep. where the second one I used was like ten times as fast. Yeah. Um, I just knocked them down. There's there's a that that red meter is actually like a. Almost like a in Street Fighter when uh, the dizzy meter. I, I will say though, I do like the um, that kind of boost up animation. Oh, well, with the with the jets. Yeah, the only thing I don't like is it leaves you too vulnerable, and every hit counts, even though you're stuck in that position. Well, the, at least they counter it where you can't completely like like the uppercut won't just automatically no juggle them. That's true, but it's still like if 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 you, I can yeah. see if you know how to time it right. Yeah. Once they're up, you can do the strong punch and just knock them back down again. And it, 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 I don't know. It's a little unfair. Another thing I really like, especially um, that I haven't seen in Tetsujin or um, Rad, or at least I don't remember in Rad, is the kind of visible damage. I mean, the smoking, the sparks. In, uh, in, in Rad, there was uh, to a certain extent, but it was only when you were like severely damaged. Uh, here, no, because I, I, at this like, point, you can actually bust some of the armor off. Yeah, no, that's what I was going to say. I mean, I, I like that, and I, I like how it's kind of it's, it's progressive. I mean, yeah. I, I really like that about this game. I mean, this, this is a really good, a pretty good looking game for what it is yeah i should also mention that these are the same developers that made the earth defense force series in fact um after they made these games they went to earth defense force and then there's only one more mecha game from the sandlot team um that was on the ds which we don't have and i haven't played um that is really of note um <laughs> Right now we're gonna go into the versus mode um, because uh, the versus mode has is it, it's it's a it's a fighting game. It's it's and well, this is also something that's in uh, rad and um, yeah, and you have the ability to fight each Antetogen. other, CPU train, just like a, a fighting game. It has a fighting game selector screen here, which uh, I'll be honest with you, the only problem with it is uh, those loading things are horrible. Yeah, that, be there that, for that, a that, minute for them to load. Uh, I had cut I think it there. I counted in more than that because. And uh, we, I mean, I don't have everything unlocked. Obviously, um, I've only played. I played a couple hours of the of the. Well, of we, the main. we haven't had the game for that long either yeah, at yeah, this point. Yeah, so. it, I, I, I should actually talk about that. So this is a Jap uh, Japanese game. It's Japan only, just like all of them except for Rad. Um, and the Rad we're gonna do is gonna be I'm the okay English with copy. This. Well, also yeah. uh, we it, need more <laughs> giant robot boxing match arena <laughs> type <laughs> games. <laughs> Um, the game... Mike Tyson's Rock'em Sock'em Robot. Yes, I would be okay with So Rad goes for approximately 20 to $50, depending on condition and uh, some other factors. Um, Japan. Yeah, especially shipping, importing. I had to import this one. I've been looking for it at our Japanese game shops. And the only one I've been able to find so far, or the other ones, uh, uh, the first remote control dandy, which I got for steel. You suck it. Yeah, and uh, and I got to Tetsujin for about thirty. I actually paid about twenty-two for this one, um, perfect condition. Um, I it, like like I was saying, I think Tetsujin is the more playable game. Um, if you were <coughs> only going to pay once for one, um, maybe even Red. Red might be even better because you can actually and, well, understand it if you don't. Speak yeah, Japanese. And, and Red you can pick up now for about five bucks and, at a GameStop, and you don't need a Japanese PS2 or odd swap. Thing. Yeah, well, one of the things I kind of want to mention here, because I'm playing the green robot this round, is it, 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 it's it, a hell it is a lot faster. It, it no, well, maybe because, like I said, I still haven't played the story mode, but this robot is extremely slow, at, at least by the standards of like the one he's using. Um, in the next round, you'll see I use a faster robot, and I just get my ass kicked. Um, it, it, it's just, I mean, each robot ha it seems to have severe. Differences in either armor, or speed, speed uh, mobility. Yeah, exactly. Like this one actually moves pretty fast as far as walking, but when it comes to like its punches and turning the torso, it's very slow. And its armor, eh, its armor's decent. I, uh, I should mention I'm first player, Tim's second. I'm actually trying to get these, those super, like that one I just right now. That's like a super move. And I'm trying to remember the the campaign, like the where the controls work. And I you see me swinging, but. Um, the, the thing that annoys me... I just like bitch slapping mommy. It, just, bah. 
the, no, the thing that annoys me is that if you could be in a charge animation, and if he just so much as taps you, it cuts the animation out so you can't even do like a half attack. So yeah. you'll find yourself trying to do special moves, um, and they can completely like just derail it uh, without... See, right there, I thought you were going to like stab on I was trying. I, I, I thought, honestly, that would do some damage, and I'm surprised it didn't. Yeah. It has, I mean, it has its quirks, but, you know, whether, what other game, there's no game in America, uh, no game that has been released in the U.S. that compares to this at all, Except period. for Rad. And not, not even Rad. I mean, well, well in, in this, in, the, in a fighting game perspective, I guess maybe control-wise. Well, no, Rad even had a versus mode like Yeah, this. but Rad was more, I mean, how much, how much time in... That well, the, the rad, rad. We just went and destroyed the fucking yeah, I, city. I, I, I was gonna say how much, <laughs> which we will do in that one. We will just go. How, rub. how much did we actually try to fight? We just you, you let's get, level the field first, and then we'll then we'll finish the, each other. The, the, that game, that game, and and the first, uh, well, the first remote control dandy was also similar in that way, where you went around destroying the city, not so much each other. Yeah, this we, one they locked the camera um, in a in a semi two uh, I, I, I I like that because I I, I, I think they, they do have the camera well placed, so both players are are it's a fair match that way. I think what it comes down to is the developers actually went and tried to make it a, a, an actual fighter, and not just take the controls the clunkier parts of the first player. And make two people do it um, with the screen split, like uh, like Rad and Rad and, and the first game. This game they took the robots and the controls, but they well made them a fighting game, and it works. Um, it's, I like I beat you right into the corner. Yeah, and then I came back and I was like, oh, screw you. Yeah, I wish I would have switched back to that robot. Must have chance. And I just cut it because I don't want to sit there loading that's for twenty. This one is, so, uh, and you'll see here he's like in the flight, and then like. Um, I, I I know I get you when you jump up like that once. Marco, I bet Marco's wishing he could do a Megazord mod right now. Uh, no, uh, but if these guys ever wanted to do it, I would be okay with it. You Especially know, that since the 35th season's out. I, I was gonna say that would probably be a re uh, a really cool cool for it. Yeah. Although all, they only need like the first two seasons of Zords and then. That's no, it. they'll do they'll do all. The no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not saying what they'll do. I'm saying what they should do. Oh, but I'm telling you what they will do. And <laughs> I'm telling you what they should do. <laughs> Look at that! Oh, get out. You know, the one thing I will say is when you get in a stride and you're actually landing your it, it, like see, the way you want your punches to go, it, it, it feels great. But when you can't get anything to land because you, you're either trying to remember how your foot is placed or if um, your body's turned a certain angle um, to land the, the, the higher end stuff, um, I, I'm, you know, it comes down to taking it, – it, it, it's, it's all about practice. It's, it's not so much – it's not only skill. A lot of it is practice because you got to – you know, since it's still taking the 3D perspective into account here, um, you have to keep that in mind. Um, and sometimes you'll be punching and you'll forget, well, I'm not exactly facing them directly, you know. It, it, I'm kind of off to an angle here. And, <clears throat> like, right there, I barely tapped him because I technically that right fist is kind of far away from him and he, you're, you know, you're turned to the side slightly. It will, a lot of that comes into account. You don't you don't get that with most actual fighters. And, oh, man, I can punch you in the face. You, you, know, you, you, see, you, you see the why, you know the reason why I lost this is because I'm using, like, Big Foul or Big Duo. Oh, Big Duo. It's like, I don't have the Big O. Well, no, you're more Big O because Big Duo had the, 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 the propellers. Uh, Foul, and I think it was either Foul or Duo had the, had like those kind of shoulders and that kind of head yeah i mean the um, art designs i like i like little. the vest there yeah i like that and I, I know it's part of the special but uh, i don't know I, it's it's still fun uh, if you have a japanese ps2 if you have a swap magic to allow yourself to play imports um and you've never played a mech game i would say probably start with rad first because it's in america you can get it for cheap i mean uh, games gamestop sells them for like four bucks um, if you can find a copy between five to seven, something like that. Um, yeah, it, it's super cheap, and you, it's a, it's in some ways similar. But if you're a big fan of the series, or you really like the way this controls, I mean, because it is, it, I mean, you. I, the thing that I'm not mentioning here, because we mentioned the other games, you control each step. Each step is controlled with um, the R1, R1 or and L1. or L1. Uh, R2 goes back, L2 goes back with the other foot. And you actually have to physically remember to make him move forward or backwards with those buttons. And, well, also, then control the attacks and well, stuff. Also, another thing is you have to either hold R1 and R2 or L1, L2 
to, to pivot left or right. Yeah, so the controls, they, they may inhibit some, um, you know, some control aspects, but uh, it, it also is what makes it unique and interesting because you're, you're, you're really needing to remember all these things and then attack and then strategically place yourself so you don't get hit super hard and, and all these other things. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's... Oh, right there. It blew up the side of your arm there. Yeah, the, that stuff, that's... This was definitely advanced to a certain extent from the other games. Um, like I said, the smoke effects, though, is like the worst thing for this game. Just, just, uh, you know, uh, frame rate-wise. Yeah, I mean, I kind of want to say that this is kind of a step... Uh, that Rad was kind of a step back from this. I mean, this, to me, seems to control a little better. You know, the other thing about Rad is... And, and I think I think the other thing... That, about rad is the robots in rad were bigger they were they were larger overall uh, um, they were trying to account for a, a, a bigger robot versus the environment because you also got to remember the the buildings in rad um, were a lot bigger and this is the final round by the way right here um, I kind of like, I kind of liked this robot I, but I, it still we, I still haven't figured out how to do the special. Uh, we sat there for a little bit trying to figure it out. You'll, you'll see when my when I kind of do a pose and well, the, the arms start spinning. The first thing, the thing I was doing was my that little dance he was doing was me. Tr you you uh, click in L1 and R1 at the same time, and that sets it into a charge mode. But I guess there's a button combination because in the other games it was a it was a button press. So like in Rad, for example, which I know we keep mentioning and you should probably go buy right now. Um, you would actually push up on the two punch buttons because that one uses the dual analog for punching. Uh, that that was unique in that way, and uh, it would launch the arms in front of you to your your enemy. And there was a couple other robots that did other things, but generally speaking, that was how it worked. Uh, that part I didn't know you could hit me in mid air. Like I no, I knew I could hit you in mid air. I, it's just, just based timing. On, yeah, just based on the way I, I was touching you, nothing happened. I thought it was mul like an invulnerability. Um, you can block, and the block works pretty well, though. It's still you still get hit for the. Um, um, I keep calling it the dizzy meter, I guess, that down. The dizzy meter, but the thing is, you still don't lose health, and that was something that kind of bothered me a little bit. Yeah. Well, maybe as uh, maybe as your armor gets gets damaged, it's possible. No. I haven't played I, enough to know No, because I, I think at the end of this match, I'm blocking a lot, and you're hitting me, and I hardly have any health left, and it's not dropping. That's, that's, that's very likely. <clears throat> so... Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It's unique. Um, you've never. I mean, it's very likely if you if you haven't played Rat, you've definitely not seen anything like this before. I mean, I know there's mech games out there, but none of them control anything like this uh, it, other than Rat uh, on the market uh, on any console. <clears throat> I mean, period. And <clears throat> it's 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 kind of sad that they went to doing Earth Defense Force, which is you know they're okay games in their own right. Um, they use the same engine, by the way, because you know when you're fighting giant monsters. Um, they're all based on this original design uh, concept of how this works. But there hasn't been, a, as far as I know, uh, an HD collection uh, announced, and um, you know there definitely hasn't been a newer game like well, on the PS3 or Xbox. I, well, from what I read, uh, oh, gotta love the building that just appears. Oh, it, it, it happens a couple of times. Yeah, it's like ah, just hitting this. Oh, you know what? I see it. No, no it's it their ghost. No, no, no. If you look real close, it's oh, ghosted for... Oh, yeah. It's kind of hard to see after the capture yeah. video. Okay, yeah. I see. Um, anyways, as I was going to say, um, from what I've read, this series in Japan didn't sell very well, so I that's why I doubt there'll ever be like an HD remaker collection. That's. I uh, mean, we can hope, but... Uh, I, I I mean, if they if they made it, let's put it this way, I would spend the money if, if they, for example, made it a, a Japanese Xbox only exclusive. I would buy a Japanese import Xbox just to play an HD version of this game. That's how much I would love to see a new one. That's that's telling if you know me and and my anti Microsoft uh, dealings. Well, well, as far as Xbox is concerned, um, yeah, I mean. I love that when you just get the proper strike and you get little pieces of you coming off there. Yeah, that I didn't. Uh, that I the uppercut and the 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 like chop, I think's a little overpowered. 
Well, the the thing is, when you're fighting someone who's and, and when I say a little, I mean severely. Well, when if you blocked, you know, it didn't really. No, do I, much. no, I blocked right there when he knocked me down that time. Uh, no, it's it's I I think that is just <laughs> I think it's overpowered. That that that's just me. Oh well, not saying it's cheating. I'm just saying I think it's overpowered. I like the bitch slap move, but you didn't want to do it. I was like, God damn it. I was going to do it. Yeah, I'm trying to... You know, I'm trying to win. See, there you're trying to do your oh, yeah, special. See, and and I, you're like, uh, how do you do it? Uh, yeah, I don't I, know. I got to say, though... It, there's mine. I'm I, dancing. I, I got to say, though, I mean, that startup looks really good. I, I can only imagine what it really does. Well, like, I, I'm going to end up playing more of it, and I'll eventually figure it out. Maybe we'll do a video, just do a versus video to kind of explain it. Especially since there's there's very little of video of this game out there. And what video there is isn't very good. Um, it, it's not very... It doesn't explain much. Um, especially since a lot of the videos have no commentary. Um, they're all just showing, like, the Japanese... Uh, actors, you know, well, voice actors and, and a little bit of combat, but no explanation on how it works, and especially for no one who really understands where uh, the pedigree, called the pedigree, um, they don't know where these games come from and how you get them, and uh, especially about Rad. I know we've mentioned it a few times, because Rad is very similar to this game. Right here, I'm button mashing, just yeah. hoping something happens. And, and we want you to play Rad because it's in the States, and you can pick it up, and if you own a PS2, which is very likely, uh, or you own a uh, PS3 that still plays PS2 games, um, then that game is going to be the one for you. And if you like that, and if you have any sort of enthusiasm for importing games, this is, you know... This, this is definitely a game to get. And there's plenty of copies on eBay, but like I said, they run from mid-20s to early 50s, depending on condition and what the seller thinks it's worth. I wouldn't pay more than 30, because uh, you can definitely get it for, you know, low 20s. And that's before shipping. You know, ship, shipping media mail from Japan is you know, it's, it's fairly cheap. If they try to rip you off and tell you, oh, we need to go through you know, the carrier, you know, that's bullshit. But anyway, this was a classic capture for Remote Control Dandy SF. I'm about to win with a tap. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was bull. I swung first. Please subscribe and uh, let us know what you think. Uh, we'll be doing rad soon. Thank you.